Hey campers, welcome to another episode of Unknown Colorado. Here I am today in another place, in some unknown place in Colorado. I've left you all the clues that you need to know. Been hiking for about an hour and a half now, and I have to say, it's beautiful. You know, one of my favorite things about camping in, or hiking, or any other kind of adventure you want to do in Colorado, one of my favorite things is to do it in the autumn, or to do it in the spring. There's less people, it's not so hot, it's not so cold, and there's just something magical about that, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Today I was supposed to hike out into the rain. The weather said I have about a 50% chance of getting some rain. And if you look at the, um, the clouds above me, it's sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy. It keeps looking like it's gonna rain. Whoa, what's in there? Crazy. Boy, you know, that's something you would look for if there was a sudden downpour or hail or you needed to get out of the element suddenly. There you go. Found my spot. We know where to go back to now in case things get a little too hairy. Look at this amazing creek down here. I'm not going to tell you the name of this creek, mostly because there's many like this all over Colorado. It kind of doesn't matter where I am, to be honest. But I will give you, I will give you my one bit of advice for finding 
the best place to go hiking, the best place to go camping, period, in Colorado. Always. This one thing is very important. If you didn't go down a dirt road to get there, you didn't go camping. You didn't go hiking. And, you know, maybe, maybe you don't like that. Maybe you're like, oh, I can find plenty of places that are blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't really care. You're still, you didn't go, you didn't go camping. You didn't go hiking. So, so now what? Oh, it's very nice of the Forest Service to come through and cut a little way through <laughs> through this fallen fallen tree here. Interesting. I think this is the way to go. Oh, people. Is this a trail? Ah. Somebody knew we would be in doubt. Well now, you know we're on to something interesting, because look what I found. And then just over here is this, and I'll let you guess what it is. Did you figure it out? That's right, you guessed it. That is a steam boiler. And this equipment is old gold mining equipment. And just up here is an old gold mine. I found the gold mine. Here is the trail that leads, I'm pretty sure, up towards the gold mine up here. Because I remember that this was the palace, uh, 
pile, not the talus, the um, tailings, sorry, the tailings pile. So, yeah, oh yeah, this definitely will take you, I believe, the rest of the way up towards the gold mine. Um, however, I'm not going to go that way. And it has just barely started to rain. And I think I found an excellent place to pitch camp. Oh yeah, here comes the rain. Okay, we're really going to have to start moving if we want to beat this rain. I don't think it's going to rain too hard yet, but I think this is just <clears throat> the beginning sprinkle. So, so anyway, let me show you where I found. And here's the creek just right down here. And then here's this perfect flat little spot. And obviously somebody's made a campfire already. So, and I have the view of the uh, canyon side, the gold mine, more canyon side. So, pretty cool. I think I'm gonna try to set up here. I think I've got an idea for how I want to protect myself. I want to be able to cook. The only way I can make my um, dinner tonight is if I can build this fire. I can't cook my dinner on my stove. You'll see why uh, when we get there. But I think I have a plan, so let's get to it. Well, I feel like a complete idiot. I came all the way out here and I totally forgot to bring a knife. And I need to cut the rope. It's actually the only thing I need the night before and I tried really hard but you know bless bless their hearts the people that make this rope I'm sure they didn't want it to fray they did a really good job they did a really really good job okay I know a bunch of you are in the comments down there already telling me why didn't you use a lighter well I did I did use a lighter look I got through it okay I used the lighter All right, I got my camp set up, and you can see that it's <laughs> kind of makeshift, but I'm hoping that the uh, shelter will give me enough cover from the rain uh, so that I can still do some cooking, and I've got some cover from the trees above me, but I don't know if you can see, but that's definitely some dark clouds coming in, so I'm gonna get a move on and try to get some wood for this fire. You know, it said uh, it said rain, but it hadn't rained yet. So I have to admit that I decided to go back to town. I didn't know it was three o'clock. <laughs> it's only three o'clock, and I thought the sun was setting. It's not. It's just cloud cover and this rain. It's raining, but it's very light. But it's not that much. So I'm going to go back to town and get some other supplies. I just wanted to let you know the real reason I'm making this video isn't to camp in the rain. The thing I really want to talk about has a lot more to do with this channel and what's going on with it and why are you watching it? What, what is this channel about? What happened to Maya? Where's Maya? Who is this new girl? And where, where are we going? What is the channel about? These are really good questions. I'm glad you asked these questions. You know, an interesting thing about this rain poncho that I'm wearing right now is that I've owned this since the beginning of my first channel. Uh, you should look. I have it linked. Uh, I think if you scroll down at the at the homepage of my YouTube page, and you'll see I've linked to Stealth Camping, which is my first channel. And I encourage you to go watch that channel because it is my roots. If you really want to understand where I'm coming from, what this is about, I really suggest go watch it. This I've owned this poncho for 
Oh, it's got to be 15 years now. 15 years, there's not a single hole in it. I love this poncho. You know, I actually find it interesting that there's this uh, YouTube channel, Steve Wallace. And, you know, if you type in stealth camping, you're going to get Steve Wallace. Uh, bless his soul. He does a good job. I like Steve Wallace. Hey, Steve Wallace, if you're watching this, by the way, I would love to hook up with you. Let's let's collaborate. I think that would be cool. Um, but honestly, I was the first <laughs> by over a decade, I think. Pretty sure. And... I have some things to say. I've got, I've got a philosophy about stealth camping. Like, what is it? When you go stealth camping, what are you doing? And honestly, it's not sleeping in a... Uh, it's not sleeping uh, on a median in the freeway. It's not sleeping under a bridge. Uh, that is not stealth camping. Because it doesn't meet the philosophy. But I, I'll discuss that. I digress. You know, stealth camping is a whole other thing. That's a channel. I, I moved on. I decided to do bigger and better and greater things. And, I, and now I'm focused on this channel. But for sure, if you've got a chance, go check that out. I, I do think I plan on maybe adding some more content to that channel soon. So stay tuned. It's funny because I left my camp behind thinking, well, it'll never rain. But here it is. It's, it's actually raining now. I mean, it's sprinkling hard, enough to make me want to wear the poncho, but I think, I think it'll just stay like this. That'll be nice if it's just like continuous, hard sprinkling. That'd be, that'd be refreshing, you know, it's like, Colorado's a dry place, it's, it's a very arid place place and trust me there is no mud being made from this rain it's still a very dry gravel trail so it's nice it's nice to be walking in it to be honest so I meant to show you I meant to show you what it would be like to start a fire in the rain uh, or to set up a tent in the rain uh, I didn't I didn't have a chance to do that because I I set up the tent and I got all the firewood when it was still uh, sunny <laughs> that's that's the thing about Colorado you know if you don't like the weather just wait 10 minutes and I swear to God that's a Colorado saying uh, you can say that came from Texas Texans I know I lived in Texas for eight years but now nah, it's Colorado the weather changes very rapidly. It's very unpredictable, and especially the higher up into the mountains that you go, the more unpredictable the weather can be. So, <clears throat> but yeah, a, some rain, some sprinkles, that's refreshing. That's nice. <clears throat> and you know, I lived in the rain. I lived in the rain for three years, and I, I mean that. <clears throat> literally lived in the rain. Go watch my stealth camping channel. I, I, I hate to bring it up again, but it's true. I, I, <laughs> I survived some amazing uh, moments. It, it's incredible. You know, it's one thing to, to, to survive the snow. It's another thing to survive near freezing rain. And not just for one night, but for the whole winter. So, once again, go watch my channel, Stealth Camping. It's pretty cool. Alright, I don't know how much water my camera can stand. I'm going to turn it off now. Yeah, am I an idiot for walking back into town? Well, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to find out. I'm I feeling like I'm on the edge of being an idiot. We're not sure yet. But it's not even 4 o'clock yet. And I know that it's not dark until 6. So I feel like I can at least get back to town and back to camp before it's dark. And that's what matters, right? <laughs>
if you've ever been to Oregon, especially in the winter, it is non-stop rain all day, all night, every day for six months straight. And I think this is why you have such a high suicide rate in that area. A lot of people know about Seattle. They know the rain and the lack of sun. So it's the same thing in Oregon. And I lived in that. I lived in that in a forest. <laughs> well, a city forest called Forest Park. And every day and every night when I went to camp or left camp, it would be raining. So the idea of like leaving camp behind and venturing back into town uh, to get supplies and bring them back to camp. And you know, I think I hiked about two miles in, so it was, it was, I didn't even realize I had gone that far. But here we are, we're hiking two miles back out. We're gonna go to town, we're gonna get some supplies. We're gonna come back in the rain. Okay. Made it to town, made it back to the trailhead, and I'm headed back to camp. No problem. I'm sure I'm gonna make it there before dark, and I will tell you right now, I am mighty hungry. <laughs> I would very much like to eat the food that is waiting for me back at camp. So let's get back there, let's start up that fire. Let's grill up some food and survive this night. You know, I think it's gonna rain a little bit more. Obviously, you can see it stopped for the time being. Okay, here comes the rain I was really expecting. Will we survive tonight? Nobody knows. I love these videos. All these people go out into the woods, they post a video uh, titled something like Camping in Thunderstorm Rain or Camping in Severe Snowstorm. Okay, this is my thumbnail. Yes, it's raining. Yes, that's a severe drop. Should you take me seriously? Should you take the other videos seriously? No. No, don't take the other videos seriously. Don't, don't do it. Don't take the other videos seriously at all. <laughs> You guys see this? This is so cool. This is definitely from the mine. Can you imagine what it took to bring that up here? That's like solid iron. It's like, how, how many mules? Uh, it, I, I can't get over it, it's too much sometimes. All right, I made it back home again. <laughs> so a question that gets asked a lot is how do you start a fire in the rain? And as you can see I've got a nice shelter here and uh, but my fire is in the rain. It's like in the rain. So how do we start it? Okay, I'm gonna show you how to start a fire in the rain. Your wood is wet, and you're not sure what to do. How do you start it? I'm gonna show you right now. And 
And that's how you start a fire in the rain. So check out some of this cool stuff I found right here at the campground. Got this uh, spring and I don't know what this is. It's like, I don't know, it had a purpose. Somebody made it at some point for some reason. But for sure it was for mining. And then oh, this thing too. Look at, look at this odd shape, and who knows what it was for, but yeah, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't just right here by the fire, like you see me pulling it now, I found it just randomly around, and if you walk around here, it's endless the number of little um, artifacts you'll find from the mine that are, is around here, but here's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Well, maybe the second thing I'm going to tell you today. Um, leave it here. Don't take this stuff with you. It's not for you. It's, it's an artifact. It's a part of history. And it's a part of why people come to this mine. So they can see the history that's, that's here. So I'm going to go put these things back where I found them. Uh, and But... When you come to a place like this in Colorado, look around. It's amazing what you can find. The secret special sauce comes in the coffee pot. It includes two pieces of cheese. We'll put those away for later, along with this. But most importantly, ah, okay. Pickles. You really, you just can't do it without pickles. Wow, there's blood at the bottom of my coffee pot. Ooh, delicious blood, cow blood. Wow, there's a lot of it too. I feel savage suddenly, I feel like, wow, look at all this cow blood. Does this gross you out? I will be cleaning my coffee pot before I drink my coffee. Thank you very much. Okay, back to making burgers. Spices. All right, here we go. Now, I don't have a, a, a plate. I have no way of doing this. I'm going to just mash the meat in my hands. I don't, it, yeah, my hands are dirty. It's okay. It's all right. So I'm just going to mash the meat in my hands and I'm going to throw it on the grill. And uh, I don't know, can you see the grill? I hope you can see the grill. There it is. There's the grill. Okay, so... Woo, you're bouncy. I don't know. Okay. So I'm just going to mash the meat in my hands. I'm going to put some seasoning on them. I'm going to throw them on the grill. 
And then, because my hands are nasty, we're going to need to wash them. So. Okay. Never, ever, ever use regular soap in the woods. You should always use Dr. Bronner's. And if you don't know about Dr. Bronner's, I'll put a link down in the description below for a little, you know, you can go figure it out, man. Come on, use Dr. Bronner's in the woods. Don't use anything else. There's a really good reason. All right, so I'm ready. I got my Dr. Bronner's. I got my thing. I got my meat. Here we go. Let's make some burgers. Look at these bloody ass burgers, man. They're so bloody. I can't believe it. Like, these were not bloody to begin with. All right, here we go. Mash my first patty. Dirty hands. Look, I, you can't even believe how dirty my hands are right now. And I'm sure all of you are horrified. Horrified! Smashing the patty. Smashing it. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button, man. Just smash it. Smash the like button. Smash the like button. Yeah, yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, it's nothing like being out here. <laughs> being out here in the woods with a hamburger that looks like this. Look at that thing. Oh my God. Uh, it's missing some onions, maybe some other things, but, oh, here we go. damn good. Oh. So let's talk about Maya. Let's talk about what happened to her. What happened to Maya? 
she was in a lot of episodes. As a matter of fact, I made a lot of those episodes private. And I think even after publishing this video, I might make those videos public again. So, you guys can go back, you can look through and see, you can see what happened. I, I think a lot of people, they, they were already um, pointing things out to me in the comments, you know. It's, it's funny, um, people who were watching the videos knew before I did what was wrong. So if you just go back and watch the videos, you can kind of piece it together, but should I even say beware of girls in Eastern Europe? Nah, they're cool, but some of them, some of them, some of them, it's like three o'clock in the morning. And I'm not getting much sleep. I, um, yeah, I think I fell asleep around 8. So now it's, it's what is that? Yeah, it's about 2, 3, 5, plus 3 is 8 hours of sleep. I slept 8 hours. <laughs> Now it's time to get up. <laughs> but it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and it's freaking cold. And the battery in my uh, my professional camera has died. So I'm just using my phone to film this. I'm shining a light in my face. Ooh, that's a lot of fun. But anyway, um, it's cold. It's a lot colder than I thought it would be. I don't think I came with the right sleeping bag. So I feel like I'm just going to be laying here until the sun comes up so I can pack everything up and get out of here. Uh, anyway, good night, y'all. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, y'all. Bye now.